Hi, I'm Rob Archer, and this is A Moment in Time, where I take a look at snapshots in history, events that echo into the past and to the future. What exactly does the vice president become president when the chief executive dies? In November 1963, when John F. Kennedy was assassinated, Lyndon Johnson thought he wasn't president until he took the oath of office. He believed the United States did not have a chief executive for more than an hour after Kennedy's death. Doctors pronounced JFK dead at 1 p.m. Central Time. Johnson took the oath at 2.38. But according to the Constitution, at least the accepted reading of it at the time, Johnson became president the moment JFK died. By the time Johnson was sworn in, he had been president for 98 minutes. Some of Johnson's advisors told him that, but he wasn't sure so he rushed to take the oath so there would be no questions. And the only reason LBJ was the chief executive in power and in name was because of the stubbornness of another president 122 years before. This leads us to the sticky presidential succession issue that went unresolved for a very long time. In 1841, when President William Henry Harrison died in office, Vice President John Tyler insisted he had assumed the powers, the duties, and the title. But some senators considered him only a placeholder. They referred to him as acting president, said he was still vice president in name. Now, the wording of the Constitution was so vague on this point that neither side could prove their case. But Tyler's stubborn view eventually won out and became the unofficial president. And he was so insistent that he was the president in name that he returned unopened any correspondence addressed to him as vice president. The Constitution didn't settle the issue until the 25th Amendment was passed in 1967. I'm Rob Archer, and this has been A Moment in Time. Oh, and you know the drill. Like and subscribe, and you can share if you want. Thanks.